Hello, hello everyone. Hello, how's it going? Oh, I just see somebody from Hamburg is joining us as well. That's cool. Some local support. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> yeah. So how are you, know. you doing, Arisa? I'm good. I'm good. Um, here is nice snowing, actually. So oh. it's cold, but yeah. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, same here. I, I'm not sure what to make of it. It's like, <laughs> it's nice from the inside, but then you have to go out and you're like, well, I'm not feeling it from uh, the yeah. outside so much. So um, yeah, <laughs> trying to have like, it's about the snow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Try to have as many as like layers to oh, yeah. keep keep yourself warm. Yeah, for sure, right. for sure. Yeah. Um, oh, no, I see that photo. Yeah, so nice. Yeah, yeah let's, yeah, let's see more people coming in. That's really nice. Um, drop in the chat where you're joining us from if you want to, um, or else just say hello. Or of course, you can also stay quiet. If it's your first time joining, welcome. Um, if it's your second or multiple times, I guess, we'll come back. Um, this is our Girl Code coffee chat. Usually there's also Alba. Uh, today she is traveling to a conference, I think, maybe. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, she is. Um, yeah, we're all, um, we're, or Arisa and I are Girl Code ambassadors. Girl Code is an, um, an organization supporting women and girls in tech. And um, basically, we just thought, since we're all colleagues, we all are very passionate about creating inclusive spaces, we wanted to have a stream to just discuss any topics that we're interested in, that our audience is interested in, um, just to have like a friendly discussion, basically. And you don't have to be using Storyblock or a member of Girl Code. Everybody is welcome here, no exceptions. Um, yeah, did I miss anything, Eurisa? No, no, as usual, like you, you do like always so perfect MC and intro and I'm so amazed. <laughs> Thank you, Josephine, always for, you know, like making organizational like stuff so easy. Oh, thank you. It's the planning freak in me. I have my mental checklist. <laughs> um, no, but we have an amazing guest today with us. And Arisa, if you're ready, I would already invite her to come and join us. Yes, um, why not? Yeah. I hope everyone I was, is also excited. <laughs> yeah, I was so excited for today's episode because today we'll be talking about technical writing. And we have an expert here with us today. Um, and I'm sure she'll, she'll join us very soon. Um, and then she can also introduce herself, how she got into technical writing, um, what she's doing there, how you can improve it. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to pop in the chat. Uh, we're more than well, um, happy to have any questions um, from you as well. But we have, we have some backup questions. So. Um, yeah, but don't be shy. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Oh, somebody's joining us from Vancouver. Oh, must be so early there right now. And so cold. Yeah. <laughs> Arisa, we're complaining <laughs> about the coldest. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's all a matter of perspective. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, then no more waiting. And let's welcome Yulia. Hello. Hi, Yulia. Hello, everybody. Yay. Hello, Josephine. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much for joining. <laughs> Yeah, so nice to have you. And I first, the first thing I need to know is, do you speak Japanese and how do you two know each other? I hear there was an incident where you met in Japan, maybe? Yeah. If yeah. you want to share, I'm so curious. <laughs> of course, of course. And um, yeah, I will, I will let you speak, Yuriya-san. Uh, okay, sure. Um, yes, I studied Japanese for three years at University of Vienna. And I think I met Arisa through the front-end foxes. Yeah, camp. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Front Foxes yes, and, uh, school, yeah. At the time. And this year was a time in early January to meet her in her hometown in Hiroshima, and we went to yes. Miyajima. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hiking. It was really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We hiked up a mountain. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it was really like nice, and I mean, like very interesting, you know, like um, to get to finally like meet her like in person yes. because I think. Probably like a lot of people could relate with your experience, mm -hmm. but in tech world or as a dev, I guess that like, we tend to know more people like online first, like they, they totally. you know, like you, you know them like in their um, profile photos, like in a Twitter or wherever, like 
you know, like there would be, and then like meeting in person doesn't feel like it's first time to meet the, you yeah. know, like yeah. in person. Yeah. And yeah. it's funny <laughs> since we both live in Europe and Stuttgart and Vienna is not yeah. far apart than Japan. No. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, and here we are. Yeah. Yeah. I hate though when people don't wear what they wear on their Twitter photo because then I'm at the conference I'm like, how was I supposed to recognize <laughs> yeah. you? Like, yeah. Or people change the hairstyle. Or the yeah. worst. <laughs> no. Wow, that's cool. It's like a nice origin story. I like it. And climbing yeah. a mountain sounds very adventurous. It was. <laughs> it was. It was. <laughs> yeah, we invited you here today because we have been wanting to talk about technical writing for a really long time and we figured you're a bit of an expert there and so we were just super curious like maybe you can also start off saying what are you doing right now where are you working what's your like passion project on the site maybe um let us know a little bit more about yourself um, sure sure um first of all thank you so much for having me um i feel very honored to talk to like-minded people about this topic. Um, for everyone, my name is Julia, I live in Vienna and I'm a self-taught front-end developer working in the field of accessibility. And this is my main topic in work and also for my side project, creating content, starting to create videos about accessibility. Yes, Cr trying to get on stage to talk about accessibility. That's amazing. Everything is about accessibility. Yeah, I feel like you have been in my, my Twitter slash DevTO content bubble for way longer <laughs> than I actually knew you just because the accessibility world is small <laughs> and I was always rooting mm -hmm. <laughs> for your content. That's so really true. Love it. Yeah. Thanks. Mm. So do you get to write a lot as part of your um, daily job as well? Or is that more part of your mission to educate people and to share your knowledge? Yeah, I would say it's more about my my private content where I have to write about not so much in my job. Maybe when there is a um, like conferences where my company as well would apply, then I could write yeah. some things or when special events happen. But in general, it's mostly on, from a private pleasure yeah <laughs> how did you how did you get started with this you said you're a self-taught developer so have you always been writing or was that like a way for you to remember things because that's how I do it if I write it down I'm not going to forget it so like um, yeah this is started? remembering is a good reason um this was, this was not the case for me it was more like well I when I started how to code and it was during COVID and I'm all already over 30 so the chances to getting a job as a software developer as a career switcher you always read that it's hard to get in there and I wanted to try out everything possible and starting to write was one thing I often read on tech twitter that this could help you get a job um, um, this was the main reason I wanted to start but starting was really difficult um, I think my first blog article was about it was in early 2021 it was about why you should choose Next.js for your next project and I didn't even know anything about Next.js but it popped <laughs> it kept popping up everywhere so Next.js this new cool um, framework and I thought yeah maybe just start trying to write about it and let's try to not make it like copy paste even though it mostly was but I have to I had to start somewhere I guess and it was well received, luckily. So it it kept me at least um, going to start another one. Um, yeah, but it, I think it took quite a while to get into writing. So several months, I would say. Nice. And you, I mean, like I already like see that you were good at coming up with eye-catching title for mm -hmm. let's say the technical um, blog post. And I, I actually like saw, let's say like few weeks ago like uh, several like famous you know like folks out there were writing the similar kind of titles like why i use next.js why i use remix stuff like that i think it was like mm. from lee robinson from Brussels team and the can see dot from um epic.web 
Um, so you already had, let's say, the taste of writing it. I want to say that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But um, at the same time, like I was thinking, like, you know, to get started, you need a little push. Um, I, I, I feel like everyone needs a little push um, to do, especially like the very first time of your work. And I see this tendency, like a lot of people, sometimes including myself, that um, I have like everything, you know, like here, like in my environment, but I'm not confident enough to, let's say, like publish it or release it. Mm -hmm. So for those of people like, you know, like that, uh, what do you, let's say, like recommend to give a little push by yourself to put your projects or, you know, technical writing into public? I would say just click the button, publish. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I never had this feeling, actually. I always thought that, of course, there are many people who may not like my stuff, but if even one person like it or it's helpful for them, it was for me, I'll get over it. Maybe it's embarrassing, but I still publish it. I, I don't have the feeling like, no, it's embarrassing to write about it. I just do it. Yeah, and also maybe like at first I was super scared because my um, impression of tech community, what, what communities was that maybe people know better because of course I was a beginner when I started as well and I was so intimidated and I thought like, oh, they're going to take me apart, you know, they're going to show me like this yep. is wrong wrong this is wrong and then I noticed maybe some platforms are like that I don't know but I was always so lucky to be able to share my content in places where that didn't happen and then over time you get more um, confident in that people yeah. might help you improve so maybe they say hey that's great but maybe you missed something um, but still they're like, like at least for me so far knocking on wood uh, it has <laughs> that somebody was like very rude about it and if you're wrong mm -hmm. it's an opportunity to learn something right so it's yeah. like you can only win in my opinion yeah you should always be open for criticism and i'm also at a state now that if i write a more technical stuff which i normally do not because it's mostly about accessibility um mostly in general but if it's more technical then i'm not afraid anymore to ask I tried it like this, but maybe someone has a better solution for it. I'm happy if you could share it in the comments so that you already say, I'm, I'm not sure about it. It's not that I say, hey, I'm so good at it. And that's why I wrote it. But this is what I tried out. And I'm very happy when someone shares another approach. I also want to learn and grow. And yeah, this could help for everybody. Yeah, that's a good attitude, right? And there is never, usually there is not one solution. I mean, sometimes yes. maybe, but usually there yeah. isn't just one. So <laughs> it's good to collaborate for sure. Yeah, oh, that's, that's good. Yeah, I, um, based on that, I actually like came up with this new question from my, from my own. And I wanted to kind of take the opportunity to ask. So I was wondering like, if there is like a good, let's say technical writing communities that you could recommend and also like, if there's like some, let's say like, I don't know, like the tools or the resources that you that you use, like when you write, because um, let's say that I also used to write a um, couple of technical content, like when I was like before joining Storyblog, because in Japan, there's actually like quite a lot of like um, people feeling more comfortable, you know, like doing that instead of publicly like going to the conferences and speaking ah, okay. um but the thing is like um it's hard to let's say like keep maintaining your technical writing skills um if you have your own eyes to review it so i was hoping if there is like a communities or tools or resources that you could use to keep you know polishing your technical writing skills i mean for for, for community or tools itself i i only uh, i use DevTo from the beginning and I sometimes use hash note and um, the community is different, but I, I actually don't know if there are other tools. I actually would not know if I'm a technical writer, if there are specific tools for technical writing. I, I don't know. I only use what <laughs> what's out there. And this was DevTO for me. It's, it has the better engagement, I think for my articles, or well, depending on what I'm writing about for newcomer like how you get into tech or how did i get into tech stuff like this i think people on hash were more engaging 
Um, and most of, I think both, both are using Markdown, or especially DevTo uses Markdown, so it would be good that you have a understanding of how you can use Markdown to its full extent, or maybe they're also offering different tools it, um, in their tool itself, um, which you should use that you make the most out of each article. I, I, I personally do not follow strict guidelines or specific routines or stuff like this. I, when I have an idea, I write about it and I post it. And yeah, that's how I do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I so curious. Really... Oh, sorry, I was... oh, No, no, no worries. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, I'm so curious what other people are using. Like if anybody from the audience is blogging on any platform, I'm so curious where the majorities go because I was like, I always used DevTO and I liked it so much that I couldn't be bothered or it was just another platform then to go to Hashnode or to try something else. Yep. I'm sure there's like so much value to be gained from exploring different like platforms, but I just couldn't. <laughs> like it's yep. just too much overhead. Um, but yeah, I um, found DevTO also so welcoming and people are so nice. I think so too. And also that they have so many patches you can earn which made me addictive <laughs> last year. So I was like, I have to earn this patch and this patch and this patch. And I wrote, I think it was a several weeks writing one or two articles per week. Oh, yeah. and I was writing and I was writing. And then I was, I already was at the last patch, but I thought there was another one, like writing for 64 weeks. And I was already in week 50 or something. And then I, I realized there is no other patch. Oh no. I wrote, I wrote them immediately. <laughs> yeah, it can't be helped. Yeah, but the gamification aspect is so nice and they also value things like, I don't know, like if you engage with the community, if you help newbies, if you answer a lot of questions. So that's also like very like motivating, right? Uh, well, I think in the, in the beginning when I wrote the most articles, I was author of the week several times and I'm also a trusted member of the FTO community. This is, yeah, I think the, the community is really great there. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And like in terms of tools, I think maybe, um, so that doesn't, like for me, that doesn't really apply to DevTo, but maybe sometimes folks use tools like to come up with topics or to check for like SEO stuff. Oh. Or, um, but I haven't really, again, like that that's a level of perfection I have not reached in my <laughs> personal writing. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like that's something that people could be looking into. Um, or like spell checking, like so basic, but DevTO doesn't do that for you, right? So you would have yep. to have to explore that, yeah. That's true. true. Yeah, just a heap of things um, Hashnode has already implemented. Um, but even though they are very advanced in it, in their tooling, I, I don't know why, but I still prefer writing on DevTO, I guess because of the community. And I don't mind if I use markup and the simple stuff. I, I like the yeah. simplicity, actually. Yeah. Somebody mentioned in the comics medium um, for tech articles, um, that's, I guess, also a big one. I was always a bit put off by the paywall that usually comes up when I try to write stuff, mm -hmm. uh, stuff myself there. But yeah, I feel like that's also depends a little bit on the region, I guess, what's like popular for you. Um, yeah. Good one. Yeah. Cool. And do you have any, like you say you got started by kind of getting over it and sharing stuff <laughs> and making like positive experiences. Um, I, like, is there any best practices that you can share, like in terms of what to pay attention to when you first start writing or um, anything like that? Any tips for people who are new to it? Um, yeah, I think that I saw it and I read it, <laughs> but I'm <laughs> not doing it myself. Um, I think it would, you should do some research on the topic you want to write about um, for sure. And also maybe do an outline, like what do you want to uh, accomplish with this article? The user should have a feeling like, ah, yeah, now I, I learned something new or now I know how to uh, resolve a problem, um, something like this. So a good outline would be great. Also, I think also for you to, to keep you writing, in the beginning, most people um, struggle with finding a topic in the first place. I think that I was also lucky again, because at this time, it was in 2021 when Hashnode became big, I think. 
Um, and he started with the hackathons and he had many hackathons, I think monthly. Um, and they, they made it like, I mean, it was a hackathon. You have to, you have to create an app or a website about specific, about what you like, actually, you have to implement something with the partnered with a tool they partnered with and and then you have a right to have a to have sorry to ha <laughs> you have to write an article about how you created the project so what was your idea behind the project how was the setup why you decided certain things like the topics the tools um and was how was the progress how you implemented other tools and things like that it was very well structured already by them um this was i think my second or third article and it was after several weeks i wrote about my to um, super cool next.js <laughs> article um it helped me to focus on stuff it was more like the, give me a question and i answer it which made it super simple for me to to write it was written really fast and i was second place in this hackathon only because of the writing so my app was not good or something but i think how i wrote about it um was a good experience and i, I liked how they structured it okay so it's like you had the very good chance or almost like a program like as part of the hackathon from the hash node right and yeah. by following these let's say steps then you were able to um use these um, approaches and the structures, um, also to do, you know, like the good search about to pick the topics that you want to write. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Yep. Related to, let's say, some of the parts, what you mentioned, I also wanted to ask you, like, how, how you're gonna, um, let's say, like, pick the trend topics to cover in your, you know, like, writing, because, like, I'm so awful, you know, picking the mm. <laughs> trend topic. And that's the most painful part for me when it comes mm. to writing. Yeah, I think it depends on what you want to, wh why you are writing. I'm sure there are people writing because they want to have many followers or want to reach many people or want to get noticed on, on Twitter or Dev or wherever. Um, so there are these trendy topics or this catchy headings like 10 tools you need on a daily basis or 10 things you didn't know about this and that programming language, stuff like this. I think I also have a few of them, but I mostly write about accessibility or also trying to write about how to get into tech. And I, I don't care how many people are here reading these articles. So if I can help one person, it's, I'm already happy about it. You could do so many things like, yeah when to post something and how you structure it or how to create a thumbnail to make it more catchy that people click on it and stuff yeah i have the idea i write it i post it even That's if so it's painful. in the middle of <laughs> yeah and it takes the joy <laughs> out of it a little bit right if you have to like plan these min at least if it's not part of what you like for me it would be the same i have the idea i want to write about it but then i don't want to spend like two additional hours trying to optimize it for like two yep. more books or something yeah yeah in the beginning i found that a little bit mm, frustrating maybe to see how some things perform in air quotes very well especially if you get featured like uh, article of the month or something mm -hmm. and um, then you see like oh this one gets like I don't know that many views or likes or comments and other things that I would really care about like accessibility are usually not that sexy yeah. <laughs> totally totally <laughs> but still like do you want to talk about it for sure right so it's like yeah, like you said, if you help help one person, should be or it's like is already motivating for sure. Yep. But I, yeah, that's, that's really interesting how you could um, do a lot of SEO and use specific yeah. keywords, and then yep. yeah, you see all this fluffy content where people are yeah. like ten things I wish I knew when I was a junior <laughs> developer. <laughs> yeah, totally. Like, well, I mean, that's kind of obvious. Like, it's just clickbait, right? And you're like, what? It you is. Feel this but you're still reading it. Aren't we yeah. still reading it? I want to know what I should have known as a junior developer. Like, mm. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's clickbait. <laughs> yeah. But maybe, like, 
to choose as one of the easiest way to getting started. I mean, you still could <laughs> go in this way. I, I, I think like if people like um, have like some sort of the template that they can follow, then probably let's say the pressure that they feel will be like less because as long as it fits into the template or the templates they can use are there, then maybe like they could feel easy to jump in. But yeah, I also sometimes like feel the similar thoughts, like when I'm reading the article starting from like 10 things you wish to know when you were a junior <laughs> developer. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's true. Um, I wanted to pick one comment actually from Roberto because he mentioned about community and I really liked it. So, I mean, like, there is always, let's say, like pros and cons, like um, depending on what you use and what you take from it. And um, maybe like depending on how you take it, you might feel like it's going to take a long process to create a new community, but at the same time, mm -hmm. like, like, you know, like you were saying, like, um, at least, you know, like if there's even one person reading my article, then I'm happy about it. Actually, like this already like pays off what you were talking about. And mm -hmm. I really like, you know, like it's also connected to the communities because I believe that um, whatever the activities you make, like into the dev world, tech world, um, it's always rooted into the community. So yeah, yeah. just just wanted to highlight um, this part quickly. Yeah, I think it's an interesting discussion also with how we see that platforms may not be there forever and do you own your content? And I feel like, especially with Twitter True. X, there was a lot of discussion on should we maybe all move somewhere else, right? And and then I saw a lot of people coming up with like their own blogs just to have a place that's secure. Mm -hmm. But then how do you get people there? Then you would really have to care about um, SEO and making sure it's linked in the right places, right? So it's kind of a yep. bit of a balance. You have your own blog though, right? I mean, I started a blog about accessibility uh -huh. with a friend of mine. Um, there's not so much stuff on it now, but it will get eventually. <laughs> We're getting started. Um, yeah, but th this would also only be about accessibility and nothing right. else. So I, I really like to write about getting into tech as well or technical writing mm -hmm. or stuff like this. Yeah. Yeah. Then a platform is nice because it lets you, um, lets you be like broad like that. Right. And you have mm -hmm. an audience for everything. Yeah. That's true. One thing I also wanted to um, ask you um, in here, the streaming is that, do you have like any recommendation when it comes to like gaining the skills, experiences, knowledges, like when you're going to write the technical, you know, like articles, do you have any something, let's say recommendations? <laughs> um, yeah, this all, these are all questions for people who are really experts in this field and do this for a living. I'm doing this for fun. I don't follow any <laughs> rules and, but I'm sure there are, I mean, you should, I think I already mentioned it. You, you have to do your research before you can't, and also try to explain it as simple as possible. Um, this comes handy for me because I'm not even capable in using jargon or making it difficult to understand. Um, have a clear outline for people to comprehend. If you want to make it as a technical writer, maybe you should be very detail oriented and like the SEO stuff we already talked about. I think companies would um, take a closer look on that as well. But in general, I think maybe it comes also with experience. Start writing, have a few fails, get up and write again. <laughs> So try out and then and like when it fails, still like, I mean, like there is nothing you lose and then keep trying, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I like this way of thinking because um, again, I'm also like one of the person who tend to feel like, oh God, if I fail, then am I going to lose something? I don't want to, you know, but I mean, like in the end, you're just making, you know, like your own goal, like way too high. Yeah. So, and people don't see you in that way. And usually like you probably like suffer by yourself um, from your own imagination. But mm. when it comes to, let's say like 
um, contributing, let's say, to the communities or working together in a team uh, in where you belong and writing the uh, content to output into the communities. I guess like all these three areas could say the common thing and the same thing. Don't be afraid of, you know, like <laughs> do do the stuff, what you are doing mm -hmm. it. And you're most probably like doing like fine or more than fine actually because I see a lot of great people who are like saying like oh I'm still like suffering from the imposter syndrome kind of you know like <laughs> loop yeah. but in fact yeah. it's actually like not from um, when you see from the outside yeah so I like that yeah. the message you were telling in here mm. yeah there's also a, a, a little story behind that well which would fit to it um it was it was this year, I think. It was another Hashnode hackathon, but this time it was only about writing. So we called it Write Writeathon and four articles in four weeks. And my first article was it was very, very well received. I was featured on Hashnode. It, it was it felt like immediately featured on Hashnode, featured on daily.tap. I was so happy and proud. Um and the community was really amazed by the article. It was about how I get my first job as a junior developer and by making small projects seems big and I created a calculator it was really simple but I tried to make it beautiful and of course accessible well at least the main parts were accessible but I was the focus was more on how you could promote or how you could talk about it in an interview and I wrote it was a very long article and I wrote about how I would now present it. Like I used GitHub and it was project management involved and I used all the Scrum stuff. It was it was more about yeah how you could present it and not not the focus on the um functionality of the of the calculator. Um and I wrote it in a spoken language so people could understand or feel like how I would present it now in the interview. So I was very happy and I also won first place. So I, I felt really sure about this article but then i reposted it on dev oh no and then the shitstorm started yeah the calculator is so bad and the, this does, doesn't work and this doesn't work and i was like oh my god i, I didn't expect it i, I mean no i won way. first place and now everyone <laughs> is saying how bad it was and how could i uh, write um how could you even get an um calculate into an interview process and stuff like this it was not very well received but still I'm here, I can't talk about it. <laughs> um, I guess it depends on the community and who is reading the article, but don't be shocked. People like it or may maybe not. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh God, I feel so terrible and sorry that you had to go through this process because regardless of, let's say like um, any um, outputs that you do to the world, I mean, like you put, sometime or more than sometimes of the effort and you've been working in your private time first of all i mm. assume and um you have to have this experience all these experience that you were um putting into these article and yeah i mean like <laughs> yeah it, it, it's very difficult to handle like these kind of let's say um mm. how should i put this like something that people can't say like on behalf of you right because that's your own experience um the way how you're going to talk about and the way how you're going to share is not the point of that people yeah. could say something um you know i don't know mm -hmm. if i w was able to like tell the point but yeah <laughs> that's also like one yeah. of the h hard part i would say that you need to handle when it comes to putting out the content and maybe that's why people feel that um oh god if i'm gonna publish this or release this are there gonna be like some people who are going to you know like <laughs> some, some people always yeah. there, there is always at least one negative comment i guess i mean not at least but yeah mostly. yeah but the it, message it is like they're not they're not the only one out there and yep. they're much more you know like different um various unique and nice <laughs> people are out there too. So that's what the communities are for, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's just a bit of a 
mean surprise if you feel like oh it looks like it really helped people and then you're like well actually everything is wrong with it and you're like well that's not, that's not the point even like i'm just trying to help people get a job and present themselves right and i yep. yeah mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and it's really something that you really address in a lot of your content uh, or that's my impression that something that get and like we need that to get a job and how to to work in teams right but maybe mm -hmm. self-taught maybe that's not something that comes super natural like all these processes and that's such a valuable part of like getting your first job is to show that you can actually do it so i feel like you cover that so mm, you're really lowering the threshold because i feel like for a lot of beginners that's so intimidating and so scary and like yeah no that's really nice And I, I shared a version, is that the right article that um, you were talking about, how I got my first job as a developer? On I Hashtag? think. Yeah, it's, it looks like a version of it. Um, but if you wanted to share something else, of course you can. Um... No, no, I, I think it is, but I'm not sure how I do it now when we're in the stream. Oh, well, we'll, we'll share it afterwards if folks That's are That's fine, right. yeah. <laughs> no multitasking needed. <laughs> Yeah, but I guess um, people who are joining like in this stream can yeah click the link. Yeah, I just tested right now and it works and I'm seeing it on my screen. So yeah, they can see it. Yeah, and I remember this article, by the way. Yeah, me too, actually. <laughs> in a good way or in a bad way? Tell me. Of course, in a good way. I, <laughs> I mean, not because curious. I'm your friend, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I felt at the same time, you know, like by writing this much of the details, Uh, would also help your own career, let's say, that um, you could, you know, like tell what you did the modifications from your side with the reasons of A, B, C, and then what were the results, things like that. So with these, all the process, I would say like if I'm in the team lead, then I want to have, let's say, this kind of candidates who are actually like already knowing about like what they need to work on and what are their tasks and how they could improve it and, they, and, and then how they could review it so that they could easily yep. work together like in a team. So it's actually like helping yourself in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And um, I feel like this was like, uh, also I, I, I came to programming through a bootcamp and this is also what they tried to show us because if you can, if you can code, but you can't work in a team, it's a separate mm -hmm. skills, right? So this is something that yep. you have to learn and just maybe to bring it back to the whole, like, because we're on the girl code uh, coffee chat, I feel like a lot of selling yourself is connotated very negatively for a lot of women okay this is like maybe controversial but i feel like this is something that a lot of us myself included can still get better in like how to promote yourself how to boast mm. a little bit about what you're doing how to mm. explain what totally, you're good totally. at because in many cultures we're rather taught to be like oh yeah no i'm so humble and i i'm not good at anything basic like i'm completely exaggerating and i'm going to regret mm. it but, but um you know what, what i'm getting at right i think we can learn to show our work and to put it out there even yep. if it may get some negative feedback so i think that's so valuable for sure yeah and somebody needs to do it you know otherwise like nobody will be able to see how the others are doing and that's what the mm, yeah. you know <laughs> imposter syndrome stuff would come and haunt okay. you <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, that's really cool. So you you said you're already also getting into speaking. You go to conferences with your company. Um, you're working at Atos Atos. I don't know how to pronounce it, but um, I call it Atos. But maybe Atos. in original French, it's otherwise um, Atos. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you, you work for them. Um, you work in accessibility. Do you have any like? fun side projects or big things that you're working on um, right now that you're really curious about? The, the side project I'm working on is my the project with my friend. It's accessibility first um, and now it's a simple website with, with cute little curry, <laughs> little figures. Uh, um, okay, I should check. Um, where we try to share stuff about accessibility and um, she's a researcher so she has the input of really working together with people with visual impaired people 
and this makes it really interesting because I think many people already, but there are so many platforms and posts about web accessibility and how to get into web accessibility and how to design or develop for accessibility. But there is never this combination of, of also the people who are, who are um, facing an inaccessible environment out there. So I think this is a good combination for both of us. And we want to to share more articles on the site, but also in Vienna itself, we I think we go to every meetup and conference, which is there to promote for us and to say, hey, here we are. Also for the community, here we are. We want to talk in Vienna or somewhere else about accessibility. <laughs> um, yeah, this is I think one hundred or ninety nine percent of my spare time. I spend with this project. Nice, nice. And I guess Josephine just posted the source. Uh, what you were mentioning, is this correct? I hope it's, uh, where did you find the link? I have to <laughs> change it. Uh, it's accessibility first.at, but there on this link, there's still the link to the original one, to the, to the new one. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I just Googled. I'm also really bad at multitasking. So I was just like grabbing the first thing that had cute figures on it. And I thought, well, that has to be it. <laughs> Yeah, like maybe it's, maybe it's a direct link. It could be possible that it is already yeah. a direct link. Um, <gasps> oh boy! <laughs> no worries. Still, yeah. this link have, has at least the original link in on the site. Yeah. No, but I, that's really that's a really cool project, and I feel like the more like the more accessibility content is out there, the better, because it's like Alvaro mentioned in the chat earlier. Like it's becoming more popular, um, for sure. But still, I feel like I want people to be bored with it. I want everybody to know everything about it so that it's like, I want us to be everywhere. And so then, totally. can, then I'm happy. Like, I, I'm not even totally. scared of other people taking this like USP and air quotes because we need more of this, like, right? Yes. Like uh, on conferences, on blogs, everywhere. So yep. we should all be, we should be bored with it because <laughs> we all know it all. So <laughs> yep, I totally agree. No, yeah, that's a really cool project. Nice. I'm, I'm curious to see what else is coming in that universe. All right. I'm checking like if there's like any questions coming up from the people, but mm -hmm. otherwise then we could yeah, then otherwise, like, I could ask one more question, <laughs> if you don't yeah. mind. Okay, because, thank you, because, um, yeah, um, this live streaming is collaborated with the Girl Code, and, yeah, we all, I mean, like, co-hosts really uh, want the importance and also, like, have a huge interest about, you know, like, um, being inclusive and also making, um, let's say, like, nice communities um that are available for everyone so i was hoping that if you could you know like tell us about like how do you see the diver diversity and the inclusion you know like playing in a role uh, when it comes to the field of the technical writing sure um as in any other field i think diversity and equity and inclusion plays a crucial role like always always and so i want I want to be able to to reach as many people as possible with my content from all over the world and regardless of their culture or abilities or whatever and i also want to reach content from as many different people as possible um with with a content that is created by a variety of people and and for a diverse audience we can manage to to include everyone and reach everyone. And I think also that diversity helps to be more creative. Um, yeah, I think we can we can only win when we engage everyone, um, make the content itself more inclusive. Um, when when several people are with different cultures or backgrounds writing write on the same topic, this would be seven completely different articles. Did I even mention seven people? I don't know how many people there are. <laughs> um, this would all be different um, articles because everyone has an, a different experience and different backgrounds and different examples to share. So it's 
plays a crucial role everywhere. Yeah, and I I just remember right now, like while you were like um, telling me about, let's say, like your point of view, that actually like Dev Two um, ha has still has, I guess, like the good um, annual, let's say, like hashtag uh, thingy, like in on the International Women's Day, right? I think um, yeah, I forgot hashtag. the details. Yeah, I forgot yeah. the detail hashtag names but basically like it includes everyone not just for women and non-binary group of the people well sorry about the notification there was also like the <laughs> to read off before joining the streaming right anyway sorry everyone so the point was like uh, there's a, there was also a hashtag for being allies so yeah. I, I I really like the idea because I also could see like a lot of my friends who also wanted to be allies, you know, like for mm -hmm. those group of the people were, you know, like able to support it. So if let's say like the your favorite platforms um, that you, you know, like write your technical content um, would do such kind of, let's say, campaign, um, like in a positive way, then mm. yeah, why not? I, 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 I really like to, you know, like see more of these kind of campaigns, honestly, to have more inclusiveness um, to the that, women. Yeah. I think that Dev2 in general is um, very welcoming different um, kind of communities with their code newbies. Yeah. Um, I think it's now only a tech, but it was a whole another system or tool um, and event, of course, of course, with the Codeland stuff. Um, and I think they have every re every year on the 8th of March for the Women's Day, they have write a blog post um, as a woman and use the hashtags for it. They are very inclusive when it comes to um, this on yeah. Dev2. For sure, they also point out if you don't add like alternative text to the images, and they're no, like, very, totally. very accessible as well. I just yep. wanted to point out one thing, maybe also if you're interested in inclusive writing, inclusive content, what helps is also, um, or what I found really intimidating when I was starting out was when people describe things that were so easy in air quotes and they were like oh well like everybody knows this and that's yep. that's no we all have a different background yep. and not everybody knows it um just because you know it right so i feel like this is something that we can all kind of go back to our content and be like am i assuming knowledge where i can't mm -hmm. actually could i provide like links to maybe if you yep. want to learn more about and like that kind of stuff makes it also more inclusive i think um yeah, totally. or like in english it's a bit easier but german is a very gender focused language so yep. <laughs> um can you imagine for for spanish maybe it's similar where you where you gender also like professions and you would say a developer yeah, and totally. it sounds like it's a man, but actually not only men are developers. Well, that's a different yeah. conversation. But um, so that's like, interesting. make sure that your language is also including people um, yeah. where you can. So that's also stuff to look out for if you're looking for making it more inclusive. That, that's quite new perspective to me because I mean I, I officially say that I speak two languages and I don't count my German skill that's somewhere else <laughs> but yeah, I actually didn't have this point of view because my first language Japanese doesn't actually much have let's say like the uh, female nouns or mm. masculine nouns or neutral nouns it's actually everything neutral. So when we describe developers, it's everyone, developers. So I actually like didn't have this perspective, but it's quite interesting to hear from you. Yeah, I, it's like in German, it's a thing and people try to like gender these words, for example, but then there's a big discussion around whether you should do it or not. And um, it's just where you can use gender neutral term or like more friendly terms i think it's not only it's not only like specific nouns but there's a lot of stuff to be a little bit sensitive about and you don't have to like do it a hundred percent of course but sometimes it's just nice to reflect like is this actually how does it sound not only in my mm -hmm. head but how me <laughs> new people yeah. perceive it and like where do i have biases and yeah it's really it's a really big topic of course nice and our awesome colleague sid who is in 
backstage <laughs> was telling us that it could be a nice time to probably like give a last question. <laughs> so I'm going to go easy one, um, but helpful one for people who is joining our streaming. So I would say like, <laughs> see this smiling anyway, <laughs> I would say like, um, if you want to share like any advice um, or any information which is going to be helpful for anyone who is watching this live streaming, um, yeah, do you want to share um, when it comes to the technical writing? Um, yes, sure. Uh, I would, I would say something we maybe not haven't talked about it yet. Like, could it help us in some way to, to do technical writing? Um, that even though if in the beginning you think you're bad or no one reads it or how, why should you even do it? I can say from my personal experience that it helped me to have a better position now in my job as I thought about it two years ago when I started to write my first article because I was found by my company. So my company is a European wide company and I didn't even know, so I don't know even 90% of my colleagues because in Austria we are a small branch, but we have different groups and branches um, throughout Europe. And I also did not know that there is an accessibility um, team, a global one. I started up, uh, as a front-end developer at Arthur's here in Vienna. And only because of my writing and my posting about it on Twitter, my now new boss found me through Twitter and made it happen that I'm now I'm his team and now I'm an accessibility specialist something I wanted from the beginning. And I also wrote about it, that I want to become um, an accessibility specialist. And now here I am just because they, they found me because I wrote about it. And also, I think two weeks since two weeks ago, I'm also a Google developer expert and writing, creating content is also the reason I got it. But of course this cannot happen overnight. So start today, that in the future, <laughs> you maybe have a other, another job, a better job or the job you want and reach more and don't give up even if in the beginning it seems like like a no and like a, i don't want to just do it that's such nice last words it's creating opportunities for yourself and for yeah finding like new things out there right for growing internally yeah. but also externally by for yeah. example <laughs> finding a new path in your career that's yeah, that's a really nice way to wrap up. Thank you so much for sharing all your thank knowledge you. with us, Julia. We really thank appreciate you having, having you. And thanks everybody for watching live. And we'll also, of course, post this on YouTube once it's done so that uh, everybody can come back to it if they wanted to. Here it's gotten really dark, so it's time to wrap up. Um, and yeah, do we maybe want to share the QR? Do we have a QR code? We did not align on this for upcoming um, updates where people can sign up. We I have the gener gen not the generic, I mean like the, you know, girl called coffee chat meetup, yeah. you know, page that we yeah. can get access to on the QR code. So yes, <laughs> thank you Sue, for doing all the magic. <laughs> so yeah, um, for the future, let's say episodes, um, because we we are um, actually doing, you know, like this live streaming for every, every month, once in every month. So um, you will be able to get the notifications um, for the future episodes. And next episode, we are gonna announce uh, pretty much soon but stay tuned and yeah i want to see you know like everyone who is joining today or watching this recording today in future episodes too yeah, and sure. yeah of and i wanted to say thank you again oh sorry <laughs> thank you again um Yulia. and yes don't thank forget you. to follow us on twitter so you will get the notifications <laughs> so you don't need to mark your calendar by yourself yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted to say. Sorry. Sometimes we get really excited and talk at the same time. So thanks everybody for joining. Have a lovely rest of your day and maybe see you next time. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye Thank you. Now. Bye.